Hello there my lovelies, just in case you don't know, I'm Annabelle, this is the Horizon Cosplay YouTube channel and today we are going to be doing something cosplay related that is very very exciting. So as some of you may know from little comments I've made in other videos, I have a small, which is actually a rather large obsession with an anime called The Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle. And having binge watched the whole thing on several occasions, I think it's about time I made a cosplay. So I was pulling some fabrics for this cosplay and having a little bit of a think. And I came to the conclusion that this is definitely cosplay I want to wear to a convention. However, that brings me to a really big problem and one that I have had before when wearing cosplays to conventions. You just don't have a bag that matches. So in the past I often just carry a small Harry Potter purse, I did with my Kyoshi Warrior, I did with my Poison Ivy. On one occasion I actually got Ben to carry a bag because I was in cosplay and he wasn't, but I don't think that that's going to fly for this cosplay. The fact is all her colours are really pastel and my small Harry Potter bag is very dark. I don't really own a lot of other bags and all my other bags are quite large and it's just not gonna look good okay and it's really frustrating me. <laughs> so I had to think about all the things I could maybe turn into bags. I started with oh maybe the eggplant seals but no like it'd be cute to make a plushie but I don't really want to carry around a seal as a handbag for an entire day of a convention. And then I thought of maybe making a bat pack out of the bat wing teddy bear demons, but again, it's just not my style. Especially when I'm wearing such a massive wig as I'm going to have to wear for her. I can't see it working guys and it was really frustrating me. And then I remembered the pillow quest. <laughs> That is something I could carry around the convention all day. So today we are going to be making a Sleepy Princess pillow handbag. And so here is what we are going to use to make it. So to start off with, we have some nice white lace because I do like to add myself some details in there. The frills on the side could just be plain fabric or we can make them out of lace, which is, you know, even cooler. And I have a lot of it, obviously, so let's use that. We have the rest of my mock-up here from my nightdress, which has a lot of fabric that is uncut. I did take a massive chunk of it out the other day when I was making Ben's corset, but we still have a lot that I can use. I think I'm going to use this for the lining of the bag. It isn't yellow, but it's also not white. It's kind of like an off-white colour, so I think if it does show through to the front, it's not going to look too bad. And on to the next thing. Okay, so here we have a yellow bed sheet. Again, I have taken chunks out of this already for a project. It really needs an iron, but it's cotton, it's flat, there's a lot of it there. This is going to be the outside of the bag. All right, only a few things left. And this is leftover wadding that I have from making patchwork quilts. So as you might have been able to see, the yellow fabric, it's just very thin. And the other thing is, is it's supposed to be a pillow, so I want it to look cozy and comfy and actually have some structure to it. And I don't have a lot of iron on interfacing, and I don't think it would give it the puffy look I'm looking for. So I've got all this interfacing which is left over from various patchwork quilts I've made. And I should have enough here to pad all of the sides and maybe even the bag strap as well. And yeah, hopefully we're, we're just going to go with that. <laughs> See how it works out. And the last thing we have is this nice red embroidery thread. It is just normal embroidery thread. I actually think I got this from Poundland like donkeys years ago. And basically with this, I'm going to use it to add the details to the handbag. To be honest, I am probably going to leave it as it is thickness. I'm not going to split it like you would normally do when doing embroideries because I want it really visible from a distance and this is just the easiest way to do it. And then we have a PDF pattern. Now you guys know how I like to do my PDF patterns. So this is the pattern for the Sleepy Princess handbag, which I have crafted and drafted, but I've not tried out yet. When I am done with this video, the pattern will be going up on my Etsy shop. Link is in the description down below as usual, guys. And please do check it out. Even if you just take a look and don't buy it, it really helps me out. I'm super excited actually to see how this comes out. I don't often make bags, so it's something that's definitely out of my comfort zone. Anyway, I think that's enough talking for now and we should get on with the crafting. So let's go. As I was sticking this pattern together, one thing I really liked about it is that I'd magically made it more or less unintentionally with not a lot of pieces to stick together so other than the bag strap and the singular main body part everything else was on a single sheet of paper which saved me an awful lot of sellotape just in case this all went horribly wrong though i was fairly confident in my pattern making skills by now i decided to cut out the lining pieces first using the old mock-up of my cat nightdress again as that seems to be its new purpose now to pin the pieces to and cut it out after giving it a good iron of course once it was all done, I made sure to have a good look at the pieces to make sure that it was all as I wanted it. 
Pretty pleased with the results, I now moved into the outside fabric, that lovely yellow bedsheet. For some odd reason, I found the yellow bedsheet to actually be quite hard to work with. Maybe it's just because it was so thin, but I don't know. It was hard to get all the pattern pieces pinned and cut out just the way I wanted them, though I did of course manage it in the end. I then cut all the pieces out one more time with the wadding, under Lily's close supervision of course. Though I obviously didn't notice it at the time, we apparently had the window cleaner around and he was doing my windows right when I was filming. Talk about awkward. Anyway, the next task was to attach all three layers of fabric together. I decided that I was going to baste all three layers together simply because I felt that the three layers of fabric, if they weren't attached as one piece, would shift and change and the result just would be really messy. So the first thing I did was pin those three layers with the lining, the wadding and then the top yellow fabric, kind of like a little fabric sandwich. So I've cut out all the pieces and pinned them into their individual sections. All three layers are together, so you've got the top yellow, wadding in the middle, and then the back off white colour. And what I'm going to do is just stitch around the outside of each one to hold everything together. I am kind of considering quilting these pieces. For the strap, I think it will help make it stronger, and for these, I think it will just make it look a little bit more interesting than it necessarily does right this second. Sew it all together first and then we'll look at quilting it in a minute. And so we have our first sewing time lapse of this video. I wonder how many we'll get this time. Once the sides were basted, I decided to try out my quilting idea on them, figuring that if it went wrong, at least I could hide them with the lace. However, I actually really liked this look, though I did decide to go for something different on the main body of the bag. So I forgot to film it, but basically what I've just been doing is pinning diagonal lines, and I'm going to stitch along these diagonal lines so that this ends up looking like this. And this will be the flap of the bag, this is going to be the outside two edges. I cut it on the fold, I haven't drawn it on the fold on the pattern, but I feel it's going to work better this way of how I want to do things. And then what I've done with the end pieces is I've just cut out ovals and I've just quilted them for strength that are going diagonally down, basically. I knew making all those patchwork quilts would come in handy for cosplay at some point. And so it was time to quilt the main body of the bag. To be honest, I love making patchwork quilts and quilting the patchwork quilts is one of my favourite things to do, so I had no complaints about this process whatsoever. Plus, my personal opinion is it actually made the bag a hell of a lot stronger than it would have been if I hadn't quilted it. But you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Next, it was time to attach the bag flap to the main body of the bag. I did this with just a basic straight stitch on my machine, coming back to overlock the raw edges afterwards. I had a really bad feeling that this thing was going to fray, but then I'm always really paranoid about fraying, so I just made sure to overlock everything just in case. Also, because I didn't want anything that I might put in the bags to accidentally catch the raw edges, pull a thread and, you know, it all to come apart at a convention. That is just not a situation I want to be involved in. Then it was time to pin on the lace. I basted it on with a normal straight stitch on my machine. The idea here, as I had pinned it so close to the edge, was that it would catch in the side seams of the bag, making its attachment invisible. Realising that I'd forgotten to account for the edges of the bag flap, I whipped up some bias binding as I didn't have any to hand. The one good side about making your own is it matched the rest of the bag perfectly, and on the final product, you really can't even notice it. I pinned it onto all the necessary raw edges, before giving it a quick stitch just to make sure it was all secure. So this is where we're at right now, we have the sides which are done and we've got this which is all quilted and ready to attach the sides to. And at long last it was time to pin on those sides and damn this thing was coming together well and actually looking like a bag. I was mildly surprised but also very pleased. And of course what is pinned must be sewn and that is what we did next. Anyone else's nan used to have those padded quilted things that they used to keep tissues in? I feel like this is almost a giant one of those, but anyway, we've done it, we've hand stitched a couple of the bits that weren't so neat and tidy, and let's turn it right way around and see what it looks like. I actually think that that is pretty darn cute. Now, obviously, need to add the handle, also need to add something at the front here just to do it up with, maybe a button or some velcro, and then we're done. Oh, and all the red stitching. Can't forget the red stitching, that is very important. Attaching the bag straps took literally two seconds. It was super, super easy. Then it was time to add something with which to do up the bag. My initial plan had been a yellow zipper, which I know I have in my possession somewhere, but was unable to find to finish this project. So Ben helped me rummage around in my sewing supplies and we found a popper. 
hand stitching it on didn't take too long and actually it was subtle enough that I didn't mind it. I think I probably would still add a zipper to this bag at some point just so that I have the option and whatever I'm carrying around inside the bag would be a bit more secure. However, I've got no complaints with how it looks at the moment or how it works. The last task was adding those red decorative stitches. I really enjoyed adding these and almost wish I'd been able to add more. I tried to keep the stitches as even as possible, though I'm not quite sure how I succeeded in every single case. However, the end result was absolutely fantastic and to be honest, I wouldn't change it for the world. Just saying, this bag easily holds all your con essentials when they're not trying to escape. She's like, what is this? All right, guys, I would say that that has been a rather eventful day. So this is the finished bag, Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle pillow bag. And honestly, I really like it. And I'm surprised how well it came out. I'm very glad I was a little bit 50-50 as to whether or not I quilted it. And I'm really glad I did because one, it feels a whole lot stronger now. And two, it just looks really nice. The bag isn't huge. This is one thing that Ben pointed out is that for a con bag, it probably should have been a bit bigger, but I'm not a big handbag kind of person. I probably wouldn't use it that much if it was really large. The other thing Ben did point out is that it's a bit short, but this is just the length I like to wear my handbags. If you guys want to buy the pattern, you know, shorten it, lengthen it, whatever you want to do. It's your bag, I don't really mind. And that's really all I've got to say. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it. The pattern, again, is for download on my Etsy shop. Link is in the description down below. Comment with any questions you have or just like, what do you think of it? Is it good, is it bad? Do you think I should have done something differently? Don't be shy, please tell me in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you next Wednesday and just to make sure you don't miss my next video because it is something rather fun, hit that subscribe button and ring that little notification bell if it tickles your fancy. Otherwise guys, have a beautiful day and I will see you later. Bye.